Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending where you are. I've seen in the comments already some people have said that they are returning home from Mass in Manila, where it's 3.30 in the afternoon. So good afternoon to you, Ray. And good morning, I assume, to Michael Powers, who just became a channel member. So thank you for that. It is greatly appreciated. It, a reminder that channel members usually get one free super chat either per stream or I think it's at least uh, once a month. So I'm not sure precisely how it works, but uh, I am a channel member of a couple channels. I just never <laughs> use the features they give me. I know. <laughs> Terrible of me. I know. But good morning to everybody. So if you are wondering what Vigano's big news is, you may remember that several months ago, he announced the creation of an organization called Exerge Domine, which is an organization meant to support traditional priests in Italy and possibly throughout Europe. But mostly it seems like in Italy, the website, the parent website for it is an Italian website. These days when he posts a lot of his letters, if they're not published by LifeSite or other organizations, they find their way to that website there, his own website. But Exerge Domine exists to help these priests who'd been who are traditional, meaning they offer a form of the traditional mass, whether it's the traditional Latin mass or the Ambrosian rite or any of these other preconciliar authorized rites of the Latin liturgy. He supports them so they can be independent. They can travel and offer masses independent of a diocesan structure. Because as we well are well aware, while it would be ideal for a priest to be in union, complete union with a local ordinary, there are a lot of priests who are being canceled now because they say Catholic things and teach Catholic things and do Catholic things. And so because of that, he is offering institutional support of some kind and using his website to raise money to support these priests. That happened some time ago, and it got a little pushback from some people who should be supporting it. But now he is definitely going to stoke the fires of some resentment, I think, from groups in the United States because he has announced the launching of Exerge Domine USA. So now there is a new organization for the support of independent traditional priests in the United States of America. I'll address, we'll get into that just a second here. Um, Connor says, good morning. And then later asked, did I, are you awake for the day? I have, I'm awake for the day. I do, I have small children and I live near a municipal airport. So I do all my production for videos in the middle of the night. And so I tend to go to bed pretty early most of the time. And I get up really early. And I'm naturally inclined to wake up early, so this is not that difficult for me. But this is what we're hearing now, that Archbishop Vigano is now organ has launched an institutional organizational structure to support independent traditional priests in the United States. This goes beyond Exerge Domine Italy to now Exerge Domine USA, complete with a website. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. The If you're not familiar with the parent organization, Exerge Domine puts this on their web, their main website, quote, the church is going through a very serious crisis, mirroring that of civil governments. Those who hold roles of power have shown themselves to be enemies of the institution they supervise and of the people over whom they exercise their authority. This subversive action leads those who are not willing to accept the betrayal to be made the object of persecution. Just as those uh, professionals who chose to treat those afflicted during the 2020 events were, were removed from their offices and deprived of their salary, so the priests and religious who do not adapt to the Bergolian revolution, they are removed from the churches, kicked out of the convents, and left without any means of subsistence. To this end, the civil association Exerge Domine was established under my personal patronage, which has as its social aim, quote, to provide assistance, support, and material help to clerics, religious, and consecrated lay people who find themselves in conditions of particular economic and logistical difficulties, defend the unchanged and incorruptible tradition of the Catholic faith, preserve and promote the traditional liturgy, encourage the study and theological and cultural in-depth analysis of the immense religious, historical, and artistic heritage of Christianity. Promote opportunities for dialogue and meeting between the different associations, experiences, or groups operating within the perennial tradition of the Catholic Church. Exerge Domine may then become a foundation, but from now on it will operate at an international level, committing itself to assisting religious people persecuted due to their loyalty to capital T tradition. Anyone who shares these goals can contribute as a supporter. 
In this spirit of true Christian brotherhood and renewed unity in the bond of faith, hope, and charity, we can give an edifying example to our persecuted brothers, a warning to unfaithful pastors, a hope to our children. They will only be holy, faithful priests to the gospel, and in love with Christ, to rebuild what we have allowed to be demolished for too long. End quote. That is from the original Exerge Domine website. Well, I have something from Exerge Domine USA just here in a moment. But this is good news. Remember, many people have gotten tired of many of the better bishops just writing letters. Yes, it's important. The bishop's office is, among other things, primarily a teaching office. And all their authority for governing priests and assigning the parishes all extends from that teaching office, among other things. And so it's natural for a bishop to write letters to the public if, uh, when they're in the situation that Vigano is. But now he's taking it a step further to support priests who've already been ordained. And from what I hear, he's ordaining priests too. I've heard that through the grapevine, who are then independent and can travel as if essentially treating areas as if they're mission territory to offer the mass. This is essentially rem reminiscent of early days of the SSPX, which some people will like, some people will not. I am totally understanding that. And let me know in the comments where you stand so far. So then on Saturday, he made he announced this with this tweet, quote, as you know, I have established Exerge Domine as an international effort to support persecuted communities, including priests, seminarians, and religious who have fallen victim to the Bergolian efforts. Many have contacted me from around the world seeking guidance and support. I am pleased to announce that I have now launched Exerge Domine USA. Through this initiative, we are able better to locally support those in dire and immediate need within the United States who have been displaced or denied basic necessities and other important resources to live out their vocation. I send my blessing to the faithful flock in the land of the free and to the home of the brave. I'm united with you in the battle to restore our sacred heritage. My deepest gratitude for your decisive response in order to stand strong for your homeland and your Holy Mother Church. May Our Lady of Victory come to our help, subdue the dragon, and give us victory through Exerge Domine USA, as at Lepanto. And then he asks, he has a call to action to go visit their website, which I will put a link to here in the chat so you can go visit it at your leisure later on. The um, Something to bear in mind here is there are organ similar organizations to this sort of already existing, and I think some of them don't trust Vigano a lot. So this is this is good news, I think. Okay, Matthew Hopkins. Um, I have never been a member of that. My last name is English and German. So I'm just going to, you know, do you a favor and ban you. Goodbye. You're gone. Anyway, <laughs> this is a person who sees a name and goes, ooh, I, we've done a good thorough background. <laughs> we know my genealogy going back to like the 12th century. I've got a, a Stuart ancestry, actually. Yay, I'm uh, related to the Stuart uh, monarch line. Hooray. But, uh, you know, some moron goes into my chat and tries to disrupt things. So anyway, he's gone now. But they're in the link. There's a chat in the link for Exerge Domine USA. Connor says, Saint John Henry Cardinal Newman says he's thankful he lives in a time when the enemy is outside of the church, but foresees a day when the enemy will also be inside. I think we're there. Yes, I think we're there too. So let's take a look. Oh, John says it's 1237 in my old hometown, raining just north of it. Yeah, I'm from Portland originally, and I'm not surprised it's raining there. They're going to get a lot of rain for the next few months. Um. He wonders, Connor wonders if the organization will work together with the coalition for canceled priests. I don't know. You will have to add, I have not seen any commentary from the coalition for canceled priests, and I would like to see some public response from them on this because they shouldn't see each other's competing. They should be seeing each other's allied organizations. In fact, Sergei Domine says the the parent organization says in their mission statement that the part of their purpose is to foster actual dialogue between the different groups dedicated to sacred tradition, actual dialogue. Let's see. It's not, it's Germanic. Uh, spelled a different way it might be, but not, not our way. We have an unusual spelling. More common in the part of the country I live in now, actually. I have a cousin, apparently a distant cousin, great cousin or something who was died in the 20s who lives or was 
buried in the cemetery here in my town. That was the weirdest coincidence I've ever encountered. And I've encountered some very distant cousins up in Kansas spelled my name, but it's not that way. How do I think this is all going to play out with Cardinals and future conclaves? I don't know. I don't know if this is going to affect, this won't affect Cardinals and future conclaves, I don't think, other than maybe if this organization grows to be a thorn in the side of the modernists, they may come forward and say, hey, look, you know, we need to squash this group or bring them back to the fold. If they start reacting the way the church acted, reacted really poorly to Archbishop Lefebvre, I mean, that's a case study in managerial irresponsibility with how Archbishop Lefebvre was responded to. Because he just asked simple, basic questions about the faith and Cardinal Ratzinger couldn't answer them. That's That was alarming to read that stuff, to read those old exchanges about the, their views about Christ the King. The other night, meaning yesterday, I talked about the office. I have the ta Tan's little office of Baltimore. Any thoughts on that version? I am not familiar with it. The little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary is what is tied to the, the brown scapular, not Tan's little office. Um, I don't have the, uh, the Baltimore little office, I don't think. So we are now, let's shift over a little bit now and go, because we talked about his... Um, we talked about his tweet. Now let's talk about what the Exergy Dominate USA website says. This is the mission statement for the American branch of this. So quoting the website. In many nations that are no longer Catholic, such as England, Germany, or the Netherlands, for example, you can still see small chapels carved out of attics and cellars or home altars hidden in invisible closets or niches. They were used for clandestine celebration of mass in times of persecution, when it was a crime to be faithful to the Church of Rome, and priests had to hide to avoid imprisonment or, or the ultimate penalty. Without going back to Diocletian, even in the 16th and 17th centuries, quote-unquote papists were considered a threat, and were barely tolerated as long as they had no churches, convents, seminaries, or schools. These persecutions are recurring today, in perhaps a less bloody form, and the perpetrators are not Lutherans or the thugs of Oliver Cromwell, but cardinals, bishops, and prelates of the conciliar sect, infiltrated into the Vatican and well-determined to wipe out all traces of, quote, the old religion and, quote, the old mass, that they have replaced with the religion of ecology, of welcome, of inclusiveness, of the Novus Ordo Seclorum. The apostasy we are experiencing is not very different from that of the bishops who swore allegiance to Henry VIII in order not to lose rents and benefits. The difference is that today the act of obedience is required towards Bergoglio, the Second Vatican Council, the Novus Ordo, the, quote, Synodal Church, and Pacamama. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> those who do not yield, those who remain faithful to the priesthood or religious vows, are ostracized, mocked, vilified, persecuted, and above all deprived of ministry, a dwelling place and means of livelihood, without mercy, without charity, without humanity. Exerge Domine is the response of those who do not surrender to this betrayal of the modernist hierarchy. It joins us to our brothers of past ages, to the faithful who gave hospitality to the monk wanted by the soldiers of Elizabeth I. A hot meal to the nun with no convent left in revolutionary France. A hiding place for the Mexican priests pursued by the soldiers of the stonecutter government. We can help those persecuted priests, religious men and women who in anonymity, silence and humble acceptance of trials shows us the suffering face of Christ ascending Golgotha. Let us therefore prove that we know how to accompany the faith we profess with good works, with prayer, with charity and almsgiving. For these priests, these friars, these nuns can stop the arm of divine justice and give hope for the future in our children. That's the purpose of the American arm. He sees, he's making, com he's, he's seeing essentially that what's happened in those places in previous times will probably come to America at some point. If not in the near future, then he's preparing the ground for when it does. <clears throat> Eric John says, we need more like Vigano. Yes, I did too tend to think we do. Um, we do. It just is what it is. We we need more bishops like Vigano, I think. I, I'm happy to see him taking more than merely writing letters. And I like his letters. I do. They're like, except for when he's really going into international politics and things where he has absolutely no filter, which I can't usually bring those here other than some vague quotes from. I like him. And uh, except for maybe a couple of his international politics takes. I think we can disagree to disagree on some geopolitical takes of his. Um, now, he ties everything he says there. He made a reference to the Feast of the Holy Rosary, which was October 7th, and he put out a letter that day that was too spicy to put in its entirety on YouTube. But I have, uh, I just recorded for, and I'll play the clip from here in a minute, it's like two minutes long, of the part that I can play. And it really, it goes really into the, the thinking of this. 
and he makes comparisons to Lepanto. If you're familiar with the Battle of Lepanto, it's one of the most important events in modern church history. It happened in the 16th century. And we don't talk about it much anymore, but it's why we have the Feast of the Holy Rosary there. Um, let's see. Um, I got a mess. I finally got the message yesterday, but we were preparing for my kid's party and I haven't had a chance to post that yet. I'll put it in my, I'll go and put it into show notes with uh, some of the uh, information he sent me for ladder and five. So you'll want to check return to tradition here, probably an hour or so after I, after we're done here. Um, the two parties in the church, a Catholic and an anti-Catholic party. I, I really don't like political comparisons to things going on in the church, but unfortunately, because at least one side of things is just overtly adopting secular political messaging as their way of telling us how to be church. That's unfortunately it's apt. Is this similar to the SSPX? I'm not entirely certain. The SSPX claims no, no jurisdiction. They're essentially missionary priests. The only thing about Archbishop Lefebvre, he was, uh, part of the Holy Ghost Fathers, and he was in Africa doing missionary work in the 1920s and the 1930s, 40s, for decades there. He ended up writing, like, ghostwriting for Pius XII, a papal encyclical on missionary work in that on that continent. And so he founded the SSPX to be missionary in nature. And it's why, if you're familiar with SSPX chapels, the priests there are rarely permanently stationed. The SSPX chapel at my, uh, in my area their priests get moved around much more frequently than diocesan priests do. And it's because they're just missionary in nature. Um, in fact, the, the chapel outside of Oklahoma city isn't even permanently staffed. It's there's a priest comes down from Kansas city on Sunday. Um, let's see. Coincidence that the, what's going on right now on the feast of our lady, and the Holy rosary, maybe not. I, I don't know. I try not. I'm not. I do caution people from speculating too much about prophecy and things. You'll know when things are done. That's usually how it works. It's why I never try to say, well, this going on is a this, you know, sign of what this mystic said. I, it's dangerous stuff. Let's go to uh, the letter Vigano uh, published and referenced in uh, what I just read to you from Exergia Domine. This is his letter on the Holy Rose on the Feast of the Holy Rosary. Yet faced with the anguish that grips each of us in contemplating the hell on earth that grows and spreads with the progressive and fearful retreat of the pastors and the faithful, while we witness with horror the spread of heresies in doctrinal and moral matters, favored and encouraged by a renegade hierarchy, the victory of Lepanto comforts and increases our hope, because even in this hour we deserve from heaven another miraculous defeat of the enemies of God and the human race. It is precisely in the moment of greatest despondency, in the dark night, not of the soul of the individual, but of the entire society, with the mercy of God, like the good shepherd in the parable, moves with compassion and comes to look for the lost sheep and lambs in the most remote ravines. And if together with Don John of Austria, there were heroic leaders devoted to the cause of the holy, Catholic, apostolic, and Roman church, while well, we don't even have a pope who says something vaguely Catholic, Today, the cry that rises to the throne of God from the faithful, and even from those who do not have the grace of baptism, is even more heartbreaking for the most sacred heart of Jesus, who saved and redeemed these souls with his blood. In fact, it is our weakness that must spur us to pray, to fast, to do penance in the certainty of being listened to. It is our recognition before God that we are in need not only of his help, but of everything, that makes our supplication acceptable. It is knowing how to go to the heart of the present crisis, to the heart of the apostasy of the church, of nations, and of societies, that allows us to understand how true our Lord's warning is. Without me, you can do nothing. Because even without fleets, without implements, without, without food, without shepherds, without Catholic kings and courageous leaders, we are still on Peter's bark, which even if shaken by the most violent seas cannot sink because the Savior sleeps on it and waits for us to call upon him. Lord, save us, we are lost. He awaits our cry, like that of the apostles, to wake up and order the waves to calm down. In the storm that rages together with the Lord on the bark of Peter, a boat whose rudder is momentarily in the hands of those who want to direct it to crash on the rocks, we also have the protection of the Most Holy Mary, Stella Marias, 
to whom we look to find the route lost. And if in the waters of Lepanto a Catholic army could bow to its queen and lady invoking her undefeated eradicator of heresies and sin, today many lonely, disorganized souls, incapable of holding a sword or striking a blow, have lost their only hope in she, Vita Dolcetto et Spes Nostra, because true hope is when there is no other solution, no other remedy, no other refuge. At the feet of our most holy mother, Auxilium Christianorum, we pr place the prayers, fastings, penances, and good works that we manage to accomplish in our poverty. She will be mother of God and our advocate and mediator, the latter title that Vatican II refused, to present them in the presence of his divine son, who will deny them nothing, especially if it is for our good and for the triumph of truth over error, of goodness over vice and sin, of honesty on corruption and betrayal. Let us therefore begin to fight our battle of Lepanto against our defects, our dominant sins, our vices. If society is no longer holy in its leaders, let us ensure that it is so in its members, that is, in those who overcome and win daily, through the grace of God and the use of the holy sacraments, the assaults of the flesh, of the world, and of the devil. If Christ has not yet returned to reign over the nations, let him reign over as many of those who compose them as possible. And if mercenary shepherds do not help us and indeed hinder us on our journey towards the heavenly fold, let us ensure that the sheep and lambs still know how to recognize and obey the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, our only Lord. Amen. St. Carlo Maria Vigano, Archbishop. And that was his letter. Um, he opened it with some references to things going on in the world that are just way too hot takes to talk about on YouTube, but uh, and some history about the Battle of Lepanto. And I think it's Christopher Check, associated with Catholic Answers. He, if I'm thinking of the right person, he has a wonderful talk on the Battle of Lepanto. It goes into some great history. And I may actually have those, that talk on my channel, actually. I'm not really big on the Catholic Answers crowd and everything they do, but I will check to see if what I have because he has the, uh, oh, yes, that I do. I have his full poem and the full talk on my channel from like five years ago. Like this was like months after I started my channel. So here we go. I'll just put a link to the comments. I will just with the caveat. I have greatly improved the audio quality on my channel since then. Those early days were really, really rough. So there's a link to Lepanto from it's worth you're going into the, the, the work there is amazing. And I highly, highly, highly recommend people give some time to that. Um, so I'm curious what you think of, in general, of what Vigano had to say. I saw that one person said that they had gone through some period of Vigano exhaustion. I, and I get that. I do. Especially, you know, if you're not willing to go with, follow Father Altman to his, the conclusion he drew about Francis and the fact that Vigano didn't quite go as far as Father Altman on that, but he <laughs> sounded like he went pretty close. I get that. Trust me. I do. The um, that's a topic. A lot of people are, you know, the questioning of whether Francis is the Pope or not is something people are just some people are just not willing to go to. They are waiting for the hierarchy in the future to address the problem. Totally understand that. Um, also, Vigano you know, sometimes says some really weird stuff about international politics. Um, Brian Walsh says he ponders the humility of Saints Pio and Liguori in the face of unjust treatment. Archbishop Lefebvre was also a humble and holy man who just went about their business in humility. Yes, and that didn't stop Archbishop Lefebvre from saying some really spicy things about, really, really incredible things about the state of the church. You should take, maybe I should record his final interview that he gave in 1991 before he passed away. I mean, he basically makes it sound like the church at that time was as bad as it is now. From where he stood, he didn't see how it could be anything but as bad as it is now. And that is a bitter pill for a lot of people to swallow. A lot of people aren't willing to admit that things were really bad back then. The next pope declared the fifth Marian dogma. Will that usher in the age of peace according to the church fathers? I don't know if they said that will a usher in an age of peace. But the fifth Marian dogma, the co-redemptrix stuff, that, that will alienate a lot of Protestants. A lot of Catholics had said they'd leave the church if that were ever done. I, if, if, if people are like that, saying that, that tells me where their faith is. Because I can point to you things Leo, like Pope Leo XIII said about Mary as co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces. I could easily point to you things where popes have taught on that already. Just it was because the church already teaches those things. It just doesn't hasn't done so in, in a formally defined way yet. Remember, new dogmas are never written by popes. They're just defined. 
Mary Woolley says she loves Chesterton's poem on Lepanto. You learned it by heart. Yeah, it what used to be, as they tell you, there were, um, you know, soldiers in the trenches back in uh, you know, 1914 were yelling that poem at each other <laughs> because of who they were fighting. <laughs> it was a rallying cry. So it's a wonderful poem. Part of your rich, and it really goes into the, the video I have there, I believe, goes over the entire like history of all of it. Um, that was back in the day when I was much more likely to use pre-recorded things from other places. I don't usually do that anymore unless I find some open copyright Fulton Sheen audio from his early days. Otherwise, I don't mess with pre-recorded stuff. Um, I actually do have, Connor, the uh, sermon from the 1988 consecrations on my channel. Those are up there. Yes, they are pretty spicy. Um, is it true that uh, Aquinas memorized Bible? As far as I know... He, it wouldn't surprise me, honestly. It really wouldn't. Um, I am going to get ready to wrap it up here because uh, it is three in the morning where I'm at. So um, let me know what you, if you have any further questions. Um, Brian Walsh says his bishop was the first to ban the TLM. Recently, he he held meetings with faithful in the diocese about the FSSP. Two weeks ago, he went off to Rome and said, and said he talked to Roche, forbade an invite to the diocese. Yep, that's what happens. Remember, the entire point of their ending of the Latin Mass is to make it go away. I don't know what will happen if the if the Vatican honors the promise written on a napkin signed by Francis to uh, the FSSP that they'll always be able to offer the Mass. What's going to happen when the uh, they get their way and they manage to get rid of most of those parishes? What's going to happen to all those priests? One has to wonder. Oh, let's see. Yeah, Dean, I would suggest starting from the beginning because we're about to wrap up. But uh, the short version is that Archbishop Vigano is taking the organization he started in Italy to support independent traditional priests and opening a branch in the United States. And this is good news. This is more than just letters. Connor asks, can a local bishop uh, kick out the FSSP or the Institute of Christ King? Yes, they exist in a diocese and serve at the pleasure of the local ordinary. Um, well, Jenkins, I would say that, yes, while it is easier to ask forgiveness and permission, the uh, as we're seeing with the Bishop Strickland stuff, when I was wrong, I thought he'd be gone by the Synod, but um, it really, they have removed bishops before for less. Uh, and I suspect that would be cause for any bishop who's already marginal, in a marginal position would probably be, would lose her job, basically. Anyway, uh, Jeep Guy says he believes that they would all end up with the SSPX. The SSPX only has limited resources, and they might not take most of those priests. And a lot of those priests are ideologically against the SSPX because of the origin, organ, how for the reasons the FSSP were founded. For those who don't know, the FSSP were founded by priests who were SSPX, who couldn't go along with the consecration of bishops, and that caused a split. And a lot of the, their priests won't go along with it. How many followers do I have? What do you mean on, on YouTube? Like 120,000 subscribers. I don't know. Don't think about it much on of, uh, adding in it all together. What's the line of thought? You get the need to resist because concerned about the fine line, especially if he's ordaining priests without the permission of the local bishop. The, the line of thought is a lot of these guys don't have the faith. That's the line of thought and that he's just trying to preserve the faith. Apostolic succession. The apostolic Vigano still has apostolic succession. He's not or he's not consecrating bishops, at least not yet. And given his advanced age, I would be surprised if he ever went there. Anyway, the uh, we're going to wrap that up here. So um, I do suggest you check out the uh, the you know the more educational faith based faith teaching video today on St. Alphonsus Liguori. It's very short. It's under like, it's like six minutes long. <laughs> so it's a good thing for you to have a short drive today. And um, because it's about a sin that probably you committed at some point in your life and didn't realize and how hard it is to make restitution for it. So anyway, and uh, thank you for that belated birthday wishes to my kids. That's uh, after my live stream yesterday, we spent most of the day doing stuff and was exhausted at the end. Anyway, thanks for tuning in folks. God bless you and uh, share this if you can.